All right, our next talk is integrating Nix and Bug2 for fun and profit. Let's welcome Claudio. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Claudio. I work at the Scale of a Builds Group uh, at Tweak, which is um, the OSPO of, of Modest Create. And to today I'm going to talk about uh, how we integrated Nix with uh, Bug2. Uh, since also yesterday, there has been uh, quite a few people that were interested in, in um, scalable build systems like Bazel. Um, I thought maybe it would be a good idea to make this session a bit more uh, interactive. So if you have any questions uh, during the talk, um, just uh, speak up. Uh, I try to remember to repeat the question um, and uh, answer it. Um, there will also be a demo session. so. Um, uh, trying to keep this uh, a bit um, hands-on. Um, all right. Um, first, a bit uh, of background uh, for the motivation. Um, we, we are um, working on um, a client project for Mercury, which is uh, um, a company in the US that uh, does um, provide banking services, basically. Um, so they, they've got we heard this yesterday already uh, when you've seen that. Um, they, they have a big monorepo uh, with uh, quite a large share of Haskell code. And uh, they're currently um, hitting the limit of, of like the native build tool um, when deploying stuff. It uh, takes a long time. So um, yeah, developers have, have to wait for uh, for uh, CI to, to complete, and um, they get a bit, little bit unhappy, so uh, we want to bring them back the happiness, right? Um, so, for instance, when um, developers uh, switch branches, um, the native tool, uh, which is currently Kaval, um, is uh, going to rebuild lots of stuff unnecessarily. It's not, not cached, and um, so we are trying to, to improve that situation, right? Um, that that kind of work is is a collaboration. Uh, so we we uh, are working together with Mercury, obviously, um, with Ian, um, who is the the lead of uh, all the whole um, operation, and um, we also have um, uh, some colleagues at Twig that uh, are from the compiler team, um, which are providing patches uh, for the, the Haskell compiler that we that we need when uh, integrating um, with the build tool. Uh, then there is uh, also Andreas uh, from uh, f uh, and myself uh, on the build team, and uh, there are also some people from Veltype that that are involved uh, into the, into this. Um, yeah, um, about the code base. Uh, it's, as I said, it's quite large, uh, over a million lines of Haskell code, and Haskell is quite succinct, so um, that's quite a lot. Um, we've got um, a bit over uh, 10,000 Haskell modules, um, and we do use, we do use uh, Nix uh, already in the project, so uh, that's kind of the starting point. Um, we are currently on an old version. We have that, that the GHC package, uh, that GHC compiler is uh, heavily patched. We have a few patches to fix memory problems. Um, and we do also have a few patches to um, extract uh, the dependency tree, for instance, of um, those Haskell modules, which uh, we then are able to um, consume in, uh, for the build tool in order to carry out um, build actions and actually produce um, artifacts. Uh, and they also use um, the Haskell libraries from, from Nix packages. They are not using um, Haskell.nix. Um, and we are using Flakes already. So yeah, uh, that's that. Uh, and there is some kind of uh, code generation going on with uh, some TypeScript code. So it's, it's kind of a polyglot uh, approach. Um, you have some Python code and then TypeScript code uh, in the repository as well. So. We 
one, we, we ask ourselves, or the, the question was, what, what kind of build system does uh, cope with a kind of uh, scale uh, of the Mercury code base? Uh, there are a few hundred developers. I, I'm not sure um, how many exactly, but there are many people working on the code base. Uh, there's constant change. And um, we are going with Buck 2. So Buck 2 is, uh, is a new, fairly new build system uh, by Meta. Um, its punchline is fast, uh, reliable, extensible. Um, it's, yeah, in the similar realm of, of, of Bazel. Um, basically, it's a successor of Buck 1, which was also kind of a Bazel clone. But uh, this time, um, Buck 2 is a, re a complete re-implementation in Rust. Um, it is also using Starlark uh, as, as a configuration or as build language, which is uh, kind of a uh, Python-like uh, language um, that uh, yeah has only a subset of, of the functionality of, of Python. For instance, in usually you cannot read just read files or something like that. So that's and you cannot do loops and you cannot do recursion. So that's kind of um, a stripped-down version of, of, of Python. Um, Buck2 also supports uh, distributed builds. Uh, that means uh, like Bazel, it ha has uh, support for remote execution. Uh, and all, uh, internally, they use something else, but they also have um, support for uh, the RBE protocol. That, that's the protocol that Bazel uses. So it's able, um, we are able to use any uh, RBE services that, that are um, available. And it's all, it is also um, supports um, distributed caching, so there's um, a cache um, that you can uh, leverage for each developer. So, um, and this is where we, we are hoping to gain the most benefit from because uh, the, the project is built on CI, the cache is populated, and uh, when a developer is starting his work, uh, then they will uh, find themselves, uh, yeah, with uh, all, the, all the new changes that, had, that, that have happened uh, during, during uh, uh, the last couple of hours. And uh, usually when they check out their code and uh, something like at the bottom of um, the, the dependency tree changes, um, everything that, you, that depends on that uh, needs to be rebuilt, right? So basically with that many developers uh, working on the project at the same time, uh, that happens every other day, basically, that you have to rebuild the whole world, right? So, and um, we want to avoid that. We want to have um, uh, an up-to-date cache so that uh, every developer can uh, profit from the cache. So when they check out uh, a new branch or rebase their work, um, they don't have to rebuild the world all at once or like every developer uh, that, that kind of you can do the math, right? If there are 100 developers uh, like waiting for 10 minutes uh, or so um, when, when needing to rebuild uh, stuff, uh, that's, that's going to cost you uh, qu quite some money, right? Um, so yeah, that's uh, kind of the reason for we are uh, reaching for Buck 2. Uh, a word of, I wouldn't say warning, but Buck 2 is fairly new, as I said, and uh, there is no, no, uh, currently not a released version yet. So um, they are still um, working on it. Um, and probably when Meta feels it's ready, then they will release it. They are currently releasing. Um, uh, they have a, a fixed release cycle, basically, where they build uh, just um, the tip of the, the master branch or the main branch and um, put this out, uh, out as a yeah, pre-release on, on GitHub. So you can download it and uh, try it. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and since um, that the, the um, build systems a la carte paper was mentioned a few times yesterday already, um, yeah, one of the guys that one of the authors that uh, from that paper is actually working on the Buck2 build system. So um, that's Neil Mitchell. Um, um, all right. So. The, basically, this is uh, how we integrate um, Nix with um, with Buck2. Um, we we have a few uh, simple rules um, that we that we use. 
um, you can see that's uh, kind of a, we are calling, we are ca just calling uh, the package rule um, from the Nix uh, BZL uh, file. And uh, what this does it, uh, is it calls Nix build. Um, it uses the flake at the given path and it creates a symlink. Uh, as a result, it just as the output, the default output is just the symlink uh, to the next door, but it also um, wires up the yeah, run info for the binaries. That's kind of something that you can uh, use in depending rules uh, then in order to um, refer to uh, those specific binaries. Um, relatedly, there is uh, some prior work for, <laughs> for, um, for Bazel, for instance. For Bazel, there's rules and packages, um, as we've heard, um, which is also maintained by Tweak. Um, and there is a, um, a rule set uh, for Bug2, uh, but unfortunately, we cannot use that. I just wanted to mention it um, because it was also a good source of inspiration for us. Um, since this rule set, uh, first of all, it does not yet support flakes, but that wouldn't be a big problem. But it's also um, a, a replacement for the, for the standard rule set that uh, Bug2 provides. So you cannot combine those two. You have to replace uh, the, the standard um, rule set with this one. And we cannot do, really do that because we rely on like the Haskell rules that are not, not implemented in, in those, uh, this uh, Bug2 Nix um, repository. So, um, yeah, with that out of the way, um, I just want uh, to introduce a bit of, of um, terminology, so, or like, like the organization of a typical Bug2 project. Um, Bug2 is organized in uh, what they call uh, cells, like Basil uh, calls this uh, repositories, but um, just want to mention that um, Bug2 um, does not have like something like repository rules or something like that. That's not uh, possible. But you have these sort of um, cells that you can manage um, basically manually. You um, uh, usually the, uh, these um, correspond to um, directories in your in your project. Uh, Except for the root, the root is the like the root cell is the root project, um, and then you have the prelude. That's the standard rule set that Bug2 provides. Uh, you can either use the bundled one, or you can uh, vendor it in uh, to your project. Then there's the the two chain cell, which is important because uh, whenever you need to build something that is uh, like say you want to build uh, a C plus um, plus library. That's C++ library, or um, uh, more concretely, the rule that implements uh, that that uh, compilation is uh, needs implicitly needs a, a C++ toolchain, right? And uh, how the, how it's done in in Bug2 is that uh, it just refers to uh, the toolchain cell and um, to a specific label or to a specific tar target in the toolchain toolchain cell. And you need to wire this up somehow, so you need to provide that toolchain. Um, and also for the Haskell toolchain, you need to provide that toolchain. That also gives you some kind of uh, customiz customizability because you can just exchange the toolchain like, like in your configuration. Maybe you want to have different toolchains. You just switch the toolchain's um, cell. You can completely com uh, replace it with some, something else. Um, or you can uh, alias them. So uh, depending on the, uh, for cross-platform builds, maybe uh, for instance, that would be a, a use case. You can uh, use aliases in order to switch and select on, on like the platform or something uh, to um, switch um, the tool chains. But um, eventually these are just um, fixed names for or fixed labels for um, that you need to, to provide. So when working with Nix in this regard, we want to provide uh, th those two chains with Nix, of course. Um, so um, the, our current uh, project is using uh, uh, a separate two chains flag. So we, we add uh, 
uh, a flake to uh, the two chains slash next directory. And uh, then we wire that up, uh, like the, we extract or we, we um, use the GHC package from, uh, from the two chains next flake and expose it as, as um, basically inside of the two chains Haskell target. Similarly for, for the other two chains uh, too. So, but two chains are not, not the only, well, at the end of the day, these are just binaries, right? So uh, you need more than binaries. So we also need some, some uh, packages, uh, for instance, uh, or especially uh, Haskell packages, Haskell libraries. Uh, the usual uh, function you could use from, from Nix packages is uh, GHC with packages, um, which is usually provided by the Nix shell. Um, and um, this, this function, what it's, this function does is um, it gives you a complete GHC environment where the global database, the package database, is um, yeah pr provides basically uh, all the packages that you that you that you want. Um, it's kind of monolithic, right? Because if you want to um, add another package, you add it to to the to the Nix expression, and then uh, before you can do anything builds with that, um, it has to be compiled, it has to be downloaded. So for us, this means because we are as I said, we have uh, patches applied to GHC and we change GHC quite often, I would say. Um, we always need to rebuild all the packages, right? So if we would use GHC with packages, we, need, we would need to re rebuild all of them before we can even start to, to call the compiler. Um, so, and, and also this is out of control of bug, so bug has to just to wait until that's done. Um, so we, uh, actually reach for a different solution. We want to have uh, it laid out that um, so that uh, Buck2 is in control of, um, of building the Nix uh, Haskell packages um, individually. So that should give us some fine-grained control over, uh, over our Haskell dependency. So, um, and this is per target, basically. If you, if you imagine uh, as a developer just um, is working on a simple comp uh, single component. Um, he doesn't care about like dependencies of other components that that are not in his in his um, uh, dependency tree, tree, right? So um, with this, um, this was our vision, and uh, with this, it should be uh, 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 it should be possible to uh, work on a component and just rebuild only those uh, Haskell libraries that you need, nothing more, right? Um, so, in order to do that, um, Buck2 um, has a nice feature um, that is uh, called dynamic actions or dynamic dependencies. Um, so, as is the same with, with, with Bazel, um, the built, the built, uh, yeah, the dependency tree is, um, is static. So, basically, Buck2 also loads like the information from, from all your build files. Into, into a tree. So one target um, depends on other targets and you get those uh, DHG, uh, those DAX basically. Um, but uh, when you, when you, when evalu evaluating the, the, the targets, uh, rules are um, evaluated and those rules are able to uh, create many um, actions, right? So for instance, if you're building Again, if you're building a C library, uh, those C library probably has some sources for every, every C source file is going to be compiled to an object file, and at the, eventually those object files are linked to a library. Um, so that these are many actions that need to be run. Um, then uh, you have second, like say binary target um, that depends on that library that also has some source files which are also Compile to object files at first. Um, this can be done in parallel, no problem, but uh, eventually the linking step needs to wait until the, the action of, of the library uh, rule is done um, and um, then it can link. So that there's kind of a very fine grained um, action graph that, that is uh, produced by, by evaluating um, um, uh, the rules. Um, now, in, in this case, uh, there's something um, 
with Buck two that that it provides uh, those dynamic actions. So inside of that dynamic, uh, of the, inside of the action graph, you can uh, actually have uh, special actions that are able to um, depend on on an output of of uh, another action, and inside of the implementation function of that um, dynamic action, it is able to actually read the file, usually um, as a JSON artifact, or JSON, uh, as a JSON, usually uh, it's a JSON file, and it can, uh, inside of that implementation, it can create other actions. So that's kind of the dynamic part, right? So you read, for instance, a dependency file, and you know, okay, um, uh, how your dependencies are laid out, and you create actions in order to um, yeah, traversing uh, that, that dependency uh, information and then you create new actions based on that information. Um, related to Bazel, this um, usually would use um, Gazelle in this case, basically, uh, which would then also like understand your, um, basically it understands your language, there are different plugins and uh, it, with that information it just changes, actually changes your, your build files, right? It, modifies your build, and um, that, was, it, that was something that um, Mercury did not want, because uh, with Haskell um, and Haskell modules, they have uh, a large um, package uh, with a, hundred, a few hundred modules, and if you look at the bit file with a, a Gazelle-generated dependency, <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> um, no fun. All right, so that's, that's kind of the, the thing we were looking for. Um, so in order to do that, however, we need to uh, do some preparations. Um, for instance, or in this case, we need to have, um, in order to, to be able to use the, the Haskell libraries uh, that, are, that are provided by Nix, each of the, those Haskell libraries needs to have a, a proper, data, um, a proper um, package database. So we can pass that on to the uh, GC invocation, um, and we are doing that in um, yeah apply th this kind of overlay to all the Haskell packages in the Haskell packages set for the current compiler that we are using. Um, so yeah, that's problem solved. Um, another thing that we need to do, and that's a bit more. I hope you can read that. Um, we basically need to be able to not only uh, refer to the packages that we depend on, but we also need all the package, depend uh, the package DBs of the libraries that, um, that these Haskell packages uh, are, have as, as dependencies. For instance, if you say, uh, say you have uh, like uh, a servant uh, open API 3, um, um, package that they're using, then this package depends on Servant, uh, on uh, Open API 3 and on Servant. And um, you don't want to like manually um, specify all those packages. So um, we need to compute the, the, like, the closure of all the Haskell um, packages that are libraries and provide this as uh, an yeah, kind of attribute in the packages. Um, in the packages uh, flake. It's not clear uh, if that's a good idea to, to put it in this place. Um, if you have any suggestions, uh, I would be welcome because now uh, you cannot really ex um, show this flake anymore because it's not valid because uh, like the flake expects, um, does not expect a, a, a kind of, um, uh, yeah, it expects a derivation there, not, not something uh, like this, right? So what we then do inside of, uh, in order to, to um, gather all of these, these dependencies inside of the build system, we call Nix evil, basically, inside of, inside of Buck 2, right? So um, that kind of uh, gi gives us a, a list of Haskell library derivations. And yeah, that's not too, too bad, right, <laughs> I would say. Um, so, and uh, then we are going to um, feed this into um, Nix derivation show um, command, which gives us um, 
an uh, drv.json file, basically. So and this is the, exactly the, the dynamic input uh, for, our, for our action, for our dynamic action. And we are able to look um, into those dependencies and um, create actions in order to build all those different derivations that um, are uh, needed for, for any of those um, top level uh, Haskell libraries that we depend on in our, in our project. So yeah, that Your was... time is more or less up. Oh, yeah, right. Really quick. Um, you can use the buffer time for your demo or for questions, however you like. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, we have... Um, does it work? Yes. Um, let's build it. Okay. Um, typing is hard when you don't see it. Okay. Um, Okay, now it's everything. Uh, uh, let's just have a look at the at the project a bit. Uh, you can look at the targets. There are quite a few. Uh, it's, uh, when I clean the project, uh, the bug two daemon is uh, killed, so uh, needs to start a new one. And usually that should be quite fast. Yes, um, we can also have a look at the um, dependency tree. Uh, So that's kind of the yeah. It's just a small project for, uh, for demo purposes. So we have like um, a few components, a few um, targets, um, and that's built like in order that you see that it works. Like let's just build the backend. Um, I mean, as you can see, there are lots of numbers uh, fly by, uh, basically some, some Nix build actions, and uh, that's done. As you can see in the, in the graph, um, the backend, um, uh, or the Specker API depends on uh, the Specker generate uh, target, and which in turn depends on the backend API, so that's kind of um, using the the output of, of um, or the, the, the definition inside of the, the backend model um, to uh, define a uh, Specker API uh, schema. And that one is used by the uh, command line interface, basically, right? So um, we can try to build like the Specker generator. Um, and as if you See, hopefully, uh, there will be a new uh, Nix build commands uh, that that are run. Yeah, that was probably too fast, but we can see like look what ran. Ah, uh, quite a lot. Uh, um. Yeah, you can see it in the first line. Uh, there's the Nix build index pro functors uh, and so on. So um, as I explained, this is uh, like the this is exactly the the uh, property we were we were aiming for to have uh, really fine grain control over the the Haskell dependencies, uh, and this is what um, what we achieved. Um, just. Uh, a few next things that we have to do uh, is like we would like to um, publish uh, our rule set uh, at some point, uh, make it open source. We are working on upstreaming the, our changes to the bug, uh, bug two uh, prelude, and we also need to change uh, need to um, face the challenge of remote execution with Nix, like with uh, Basil, <laughs> uh, and. Um, yeah, I uh, hope uh, that uh, convinces you a bit that um, the combination of like uh, of of Bactu and Nix um, matches uh, is a match. Um, so, only questions for like twenty seconds. <laughs> I'm not sure if we have time for questions. Uh, maybe a very quick one, but. If there's any, maybe. Okay, there's one. 
You're lucky number one. <laughs> so it seems like you worked a lot with different uh, build systems like of this type, like these cloud build systems. And I'm wondering um, what, what you would say, how compatible or incompatible are they? What's your experience with working with them and their interoperability? What would you say about that? Um, yeah, um, good question. But um, I would say um, all these systems, like I, I've worked with, uh, with Basil a lot and uh, also with Bak2 now uh, since the beginning of the year. And I would say um, they are fairly uh, comparable. Uh, I mean, um, the same concepts. Um, just Bak2 feels a bit nicer, like they, they have uh, a better UX uh, and uh, also uh, they feel a bit snappier, like the startup times, which is no wonder when they use Rust instead of uh, Java. So, um, <laughs> yeah, other than that, um, there are many, many different, uh, many, many similarities, I would say, um, like from the uh, internal structures, like also from the, the idea of, uh, of the an analysis phase and uh, an execution phase and um, yeah. Okay, another round of applause for your speaker.